and welcome to freephotoshop.com and part one of my advanced tutorials looking at how we can apply various sharpening techniques in different ways to improve the overall results of our images. In this session we'll be looking at how to avoid color banding and color noise during the sharpening process. Okay, I'm going to start things off by opening up this image entitled Candle and then going up to my filter menu and selecting sharpen and I'm going to use the unsharp mask. Now I'm going to boost the amount value up to 500 percent and then I'm going to set the radius value to 10 pixels and leave the threshold value set to around about 1 pixel and then click OK to accept the changes there. Now the settings I've applied here are just for demonstration purposes it's important to make that clear primarily because we now have a razor sharp candle which isn't really good for anything apart from demonstration. Now what I'm going to do is zoom right in so some of this color noise becomes clearly visible on screen. Um, you can start to see the color noise pretty vividly there. I'm going to hit control Z to show just how this image looked before we sharpened it and then I'm going to hit control Z once more to bring back the image with the sharpening applied and I don't think there'll be any doubts as to how much color noise and color distortion we've picked up along the sharpening process. Now we all should keep in mind that this is an extreme example produced from an excessively high sharpening in amount and although problems we get with color distortion are rarely this extreme in fact, I've never seen a problem this severe before. It does hopefully outline that firstly this problem does exist and secondly can really harm the final quality of your image even with small amounts of distortion. Well, like any problem in Photoshop, there is always an answer and with this particular problem there is two fairly well-known answers that can have the same results. OK, I'm going to start off by hitting F12 on the keyboard which will revert this image back to its original self. And I'm going to say, stay zoomed in here so you can see what's happening. And what we're looking for is a way we can sharpen the luminosity or the lightness of the pixels in the image but not affect the color or intensity of the colors. I'm going to bring the layers palette into view here um, so we can see what's happening and then click the channels tab at the top to reveal our channel information. Now we have three channels available to us here, assuming that you're working in an RGB color space that is. The first one isn't actually a channel, it's just a composite view of the other three channels added together. What we've got is a red, green and blue channel that contains the color information for the whole image. What we haven't got is any way of editing the luminosity values independent of the color values. And that's where the lab color space comes in. So let's go up to our image menu and select mode and then select lab color. Now you can see in our channels palette that our channels have changed. We've now got a lab channel which is the composite. We've got an A and B channel which contains all the color information and we also get this lightness channel which is dedicated to the lightness values inside the image. Now if we click the lightness channel to select it and then click the eyeball of the lab composite view to view all the channels together so even though we can see all the colors in the image we've only got the lightness channel selected and that's the important part here now if we go ahead and select the unsharp mask and go with our previously used settings of 500% for an amount value, 10 pixels for a radius value and a threshold of 1 and then click OK. Now we're sharpening our image with absolutely no color distortion at all. We can go back to our image menu, select mode and then simply switch back to our RGB color space and it really is as simple as that. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the channels palette out of the way now just to make you aware the conversion of RGB to lab and then back again does result in the slightest of color shifts for some pixels but in reality it's so slight that you're never really going to notice with the eye anyway 
I'm going to zoom out for a better view of our razor sharp candle which we know has no color distortion whatsoever. Now there is an easier way of sharpening just the lightness values inside of an image so I'm going to hit the F12 key once again to revert the image back to its original state. I'm also going to hit Control F to apply the last used filter which of course is our unsharp mask filter and that will be applied with all the same settings we used last time so to say we're over sharpening our image by quite an amount. Now I'm going to zoom in here so we've got a good view of the color distortion we've produced and then I'm going to go up to the edit menu and select this option here fade unsharp mask a great command that will only be available here if applying the unsharp mask is the last significant operation we've used which of course it is. The zooming in I did in between applying the filter and using this command doesn't actually matter as it wasn't classed by Photoshop as a significant operation. If I'd used a tool from the tools palette or even clicked inside the image with the move tool say the fade command would have been lost. OK, so I'm going to click the Fade Unsharp Mask command, which presents me with this dialog box and two options. Three if you include the preview checkbox, I guess. We've got Opacity, which indicates how much of the Unsharp Mask we're revealing. So at 100% we're seeing all of it, and at 0% we're seeing none of it. I'm going to leave that at 100% as what we're really interested in here is the blending mode. If we simply change the mode from Normal to Luminosity, we're going to be maintaining the lightness values in the same way as lab mode did but throwing away all the extra color and saturation information we picked up whilst applying the unsharp mask. Well I can now adjust the fade value until I see something I like and that's great. I'm going to click OK to accept the changes and we're done. Well I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.